The Story of the Waterman, Duke Kahanamoku. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Around the Rings podcast. I'm Ed Hula. A new documentary on the legendary Duke Kahanamoku is about to be released called Waterman. This film explores the triumphs and influence of Kahanamoku, born in 1890 in Hawaii, and is given credit, I guess most famously, as the inventor of surfing. And before there was surfing, he was a swimmer, uh, winning five medals at the 1912, 1920, and 1924 Olympics. A five-time Olympian, one of the first sporting superstars of the United States, Hawaii, of course, at that time, a, a U.S. territory. His contemporaries in athletics at that time included Jim Thorpe and Johnny Weissmuller, real legends as well in the annals of American sport. Hollywood also added to the Duke's fame with roles in 20 films from the 1920s into the 1950s. Waterman is the latest production of Sidewinder Films, which is known for other documentaries in the realm of sport and society. Its most recent production, At the Heart of Gold, explored the trauma of the sex abuse suffered by U.S. gymnasts. This award-winning film is uh, really a poignant film to, to see. Sidewinder Films is the media division of the Foundation for Global Sports Development, a nonprofit which promotes access to sport, equality, and justice. The GSD is a longtime supporter of Around the Rings. And joining us today are the producers of The Waterman, Dr. Stephen Ungerleiter and David Ulick, founders as well of the GSD. Both of you, it's uh, glad to to have you with us and to talk about this this film, which sounds like a was was a great experience to to put together and get, get to know more about Duke Hanamuku. What was the what was the inspiration for uh, for creating this film, David? Uh, thanks, Ed. Yeah, uh, Stephen and I uh, going back actually uh, over four years ago came across a book by David Davis called Waterman, which told the story of Duke Kahanamoku. And when we first saw the book, we, we thought we knew the story about Duke. We obviously knew there are a couple of restaurants named after him. We knew he was a well-known Hawaiian surfer, but we really didn't know everything about him. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, he was a multiple Olympian uh, and, and, and really uh, he really put Hawaii, which was not a state at that point, on the map in terms of tourism and, and introduced the concept of aloha. He also faced a lot of issues, which which we see nowadays as, as current issues in terms of discrimination and prejudice, and dealt with them in in, in a very uh, impressive way. And so we saw this story not only as historical, but that really raises issues that are with us today. And Stephen and I, after reading the book, decided that this was a story that we really needed to tell on film. Yeah, uh, Stephen, what about Duke Hanamuku did you want to? Uh... Uh, bring to a wider audience. What did you want to tell about the Duke from this uh, from this film? Well, Ed, um, the concept of, 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 of being a waterman, which Duke uh, was, is to understand the uh, culture, the Polynesian culture, of uh, loving the water, respecting the water, interacting with the water, uh, learning how to be safe, uh, in and out of the water. Uh, you know, besides the surfing and swimming, uh, Duke introduced uh, the notion of using a board to rescue people. So the whole concept of uh, lifeguarding, uh, he invented that. And uh, henceforth, he saved a lot of lives because he knew how to get out through the water. Very uh, able and strong swimmer, but he used a particular technique and he went off to Australia and, and New Zealand and he uh, shared that information and, and basically established this uh, whole construct of, of saving lives using the board. But, uh, you know, respect for the water, respect for people, um, and uh, knowing how to be humble. Uh, he was an extraordinary uh, uh, man, uh, more than just a great athlete. Um, he really cared about uh, the people around him. 
And what 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 made him famous? Was it his Olympic experience? Uh, you know, what what catapulted him into becoming really a uh, a global figure uh, at that time, which was probably uh, a tough thing to get done in this in the in the 1920s and 1930s when communication was just not like it is today. Yeah, it was it was swimming that initially catapulted him to fame. In 1912, he he was uh, basically uh, unknown on the international scene, and and he won the AAU meet, broke the world record in in Honolulu Harbor uh, for the 100 meter swimming. And a few months later, he was uh, in Sweden at the 1912 Olympics, and that really launched him into international fame. He won the gold medal there, and and, and for many years dominated swimming. And then he used that as a platform and his, his, his fame as a platform to really, uh, you know, put Hawaii on the map. And, and, and he really became the face of Hawaii in terms of tourism. Did you uh, uh, encounter any surprises in the making of this film? Things that, that you didn't know, that, you know, some aspect of Duka Hanamuku that uh, just kind of made you realize this was an extraordinary figure. I think there were several things along the uh, process of our research and, and then uh, doing the film. One little thing that I'll mention, uh, which goes back to your earlier uh, uh, David's comments, along the way to becoming an Olympic, he had to go to the Olympic trials, which is a standard protocol that we have with all sports, including swimming. And he, he swam in a swimming pool for the first time ever. And uh, it had a different temperature, it had a different buoyancy, the chlorine, and of course, he had to make a turn. Uh, and he'd never done a turn, a swim turn, flip turn in his life. He was just used to going out in the ocean and just swimming for, you know, an hour or mile, whatever. Uh, so he, he had some problems. He struggled at the trials because he had no idea, no concept in his mind or body of how you go down and then do a flip turn. And so uh, it was a very interesting story uh, without uh, ruining it uh, for you in the audience, but he did get some help from a very, very unique individual. And, and that was kind of a treat for all of us. Now what's in the film? What will, what will we see next week when the, when the film is released at premieres at the Honolulu Film Festival, uh, I believe November 5th. Um, what, 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 what is the you, archival footage interviews? What are the elements that make it all happen? It's going to be a combination of, um, of, 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 of footage from, from the Duke from the 1960s and also photographs. We also have some live reenactments. We've really brought the film to life. We have some actors in the film who are recreating the swim scenes and some of the surfing scenes are amazing. Tandem surfing with the Duke with uh, a young lady on his shoulders. So it's really a, a, a dynamic film. And uh, the the archival footage, is is there a lot of, of it available of Kahanamuku? There, there's quite a bit. We were very surprised considering the, uh, you know, uh, uh, timeline. Uh, I will tell you that there's a very precious piece with Johnny Weissmuller. It's very touching, uh, and uh, uh, it's 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 really uh, very meaningful in the context of the Duke's life and uh, the fact that he uh, not only knew Johnny, they became very good friends. Uh, both in the swimming world and in the acting world. And it's a little bittersweet because Weissmuller was chosen uh, to star in certain roles that Duke really should have had, but there was so much discrimination at that time that uh, Mr. Weissmuller uh, uh, prevailed. Are there people around who you could talk to who, who did have contact with Kahanamuku or are they are they long past as well? Uh, there are people still alive. The Duke uh, had, had a team of young surfers who he worked with, uh, who were much younger than he was, and they're obviously older now. But they were known as the Beach Boys, hmm. and 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 several of them are actually in the film. 
and uh, so yeah, we we do we do have people in the film who knew who knew it. Um, you the 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 narrator for the film uh, is uh, uh, Jason Momoa, the Aquaman superhero. That was seems to be a, a very natural selection for someone to help tell the story. Uh, a native Hawaiian as well, Jason is. Uh, what was that like? Uh, was that an automatic choice or an inspiration to, to find him to work on this film? Well, we actually were very, very blessed to have him. He, as you can imagine, being Aquaman and uh, uh, Game of Thrones, and he is a, a, a major figure in in Hollywood and in in uh, in film right now. He's working on seven other projects, so very much in demand. <clears throat> uh, we were uh, very lucky to have him. Uh, actually, he heard about it, and um, he was struck not so much by uh, Duke's athleticism. He was very struck by um, his his ethics and the fact that we brought out his ethics and the essence of the Polynesian culture and the aloha spirit. And uh, Jason uh, is, a, is a very humble, very spiritual man. And he said, you know, this is something I usually don't do. And my agent has to get involved and basically put all that aside and said, I want to do this because I think you've captured something very important. You've captured the essence of the Polynesian culture, and uh, I'm I'm very touched by uh, this film. So uh, we were we were very lucky to get him. And other people who uh, appear in the film, I think I saw a clip of Kelly Slater and some other well-known uh, figures in the in the surfing world of today. Yeah, we've got uh, Kelly Slater. We have Laird Hamilton. Uh, we have Carissa Moore, which was just it just jumps on another yeah, topic. We're so exciting, gold medalist, and 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 Carissa actually saw a, a rough cut of the film shortly before the Tokyo Olympics, and and after the game, she said that she was inspired by the Duke uh, and and his performance, uh, and, and and so we were we were really blessed to hear that. Um, he was accepted as a hero. He was given the, the status of a hero by the uh, American public, but still subject to discrimination throughout throughout his life. Um, does the film go into how he dealt with that and overcame this kind of prejudice? We do go into that and, and it's it's painful. Uh, it's um, it's it's uh, you know, um, definitely a, a dark moment uh, for him and for our, our, our culture. Uh, we see these things happening today. Um, and he, he dealt with it um, in a very unique way. Um, he tried to put on a graceful uh, uh, demeanor and, and continue his, his work uh, as a waterman and, and help people learn to surf, how to swim. Uh, but there were dark moments for him. He, he really, he did struggle and uh, getting a good job was very, very hard for him. In Hawaii though, he was, uh, he was sheriff. Was that right? Sheriff of Honolulu for a while or a number of years? Yeah, but just, just following up on what Steven said, uh, you know, this was a time when in order to participate in the Olympics, you had to be an amateur. And, and we all know the stories of those who, who, who digressed from that and then you know, lost their Olympic status, lost their gold medals. And so he had to be extremely careful and he couldn't, he, no, even though he was world famous and was the best swimmer in the world, he couldn't use his swimming to make money. So it was a real struggle. And, and the Hawaiian people looked at him as their hero and, and they didn't want him to lose his fame as a swimmer. So he was stuck in this pressure between the need to make money, but also keeping the people of Hawaii happy and so he couldn't really he didn't want to lose that olympic status and, and and take away from the fame of hawaii so he was really forced not to take on any really profitable work that he otherwise could have so it was very it was a dilemma for him what was hollywood his uh, his film work uh, an important source of uh, income for him and his family i think he took uh tried to make it uh there but 
uh, and he did derive some income, but I think he struggled. Uh, um, he, he did have some parts, but he lost some of the major uh, parts because of his, uh, the color of his skin. There was, you know, quite a, quite a bit of discrimination there. So that was, again, a, a struggle. And, you know, he, some of those appearances, the roles he played today would be cringeworthy. I mean, it, 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 it played on stereotypes and, uh, um, you know, was, you know, unfortunate part of, you know, the way America cinema um, handled, uh, handled him and other, other people of uh, indigenous backgrounds in, uh, in the United States. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He was relegated to character roles. He never he never was able to play the leading man. Uh, and even though he was a leading man in Hawaii and on the world stage, he, he could not be a leading man in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, how, how long is the film? 90 minutes. And did you want to make it longer? Is that the ideal length for it, you think? You know, that's always a struggle. And uh, I think you and I... Uh, talked about this uh, before with The Heart of Gold, uh, which is our documentary uh, about the, the survivors of, of the Nasser uh, sexual assault. Uh, that film was was also uh, supposed to be uh, longer and we needed to cut uh, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one was the constraints of, of HBO who bought it, but also it just needed to be uh, trim, and I think uh, same thing with with, with Duke uh, and Waterman. Uh, you get caught up in in wanting to, as producers, as writers, and researchers, you want to say more. You want to share the wealth of the story. You want to keep putting stuff. But at at a certain point, a good director, uh, which I'm not, or a good editor, which I'm not, uh, will say, "Wait a minute." Don't lose your audience. You've got rich, rich material and it moves beautifully. Don't lose your audience. So we uh, we struggle with that from time to time. And that's why Dave and I have uh, built a terrific team of experts to come in uh, and, and uh, you know, challenge us and help us get to that uh, special point. The, the films you've done previously, we'll, we'll just use uh, At the Heart of Gold, and Munich, 72, uh, about the uh, the attack on the uh, Israeli delegation at those games. Uh, both of those films, you know, very poignant issues, uh, tragedy uh, part of it, uh, trauma, uh, very much uh, a part of these these stories. But this is uh, maybe a, 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 a different different topic, kind of a different atmosphere around this film than, uh, than these others. Was this a, uh, uh, an interesting and enjoyable uh, change of uh, pace, if you will, for producing a, a it's, film? It's definitely, it's definitely yeah, 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 sometimes my friends joke with us, gee, you finally made a movie that's not uh, on such a sad and, and, and serious uh, topic. But, um, but, you know, this is also a very serious topic. Uh, I mean, the Duke, um, is, is a very serious, he, he's a legend in Hawaii. And and you you mentioned the Duke to anyone in Hawaii and everybody, they learn about him in school. And we actually, uh, one of the challenges we had was gaining the trust of the Hawaiian people in making this film. Uh, you know, we, you know, we're just two, two people from, from the Western part of the United, of the of West Coast. And, and they said, well, how do we know you're gonna pay proper tribute to our legend? And we were blessed. Uh, and I, I have to mention the team we had was amazing. Isaac Kalisima, our director, his uncle actually made the statue, crafted the statue of, of the Duke that's on the beach in Waikiki. And it was his lifelong goal was to make a, make a movie about the Duke. Uh, Chet Thomas also on our team. And they, they really worked with their contacts to, uh, in, in the Hawaiian community to, to, so that we could gain the trust of, of, the, of, of the Hawaiians. And, and without that, we could never have made this film. You mentioned a statue. He had statues all over the world. I, I know when we were in Australia, got to see the uh, the one of him at Freshwater Beach, there in uh, in uh, New South Wales, 
I think there may be one in New Zealand. Uh, did you get all the statues in the film? Yeah, they're they're all there, and, and uh, as David said, he he was a huge figure, an icon, and still is in Hawaii. But uh, you talk to people in Australia, and New Zealand. I mean, everybody knows him, and and there's a waterman culture uh, there, of course. Going back to your question, and I, and I really appreciate it. Uh, about moving from uh, the two previous films, Munich and Heart of Gold, which were, were very dark and, and um, uh, very harsh subjects and difficult to make, um, moving to a lighter subject, uh, which Duke uh, is, and, and making the film was uh, a much lighter tone. Uh, uh, my children uh, said, hey, Dad, <laughs> you know, when are you going to lighten up? And you know, uh, do something a little bit uh, with more joyfulness. And uh, so it, it is interesting that you, you bring that up. I think uh, all of us, uh, all of us at GSD and Sidewinder, uh, Melanie Raffle and Brooke Baumgartner and uh, Isabel uh, Cather, who I think you know, uh, we all felt in our meetings, uh, which we have twice a week uh, for many, many years, we all felt a, a little more lighthearted uh, and there was a different atmosphere around it. Well, I hope we've managed to build some uh, interest, uh, anticipation for the film. Uh, for those of us, many of us who won't be able to get to Honolulu in the next week or so to see this film, how, uh, what kind of distribution are you expecting uh, that uh, will put it before many eyeballs? Well, we have a whole uh, uh, plan. We, 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 we're gonna be in numerous film festivals around the country. We're also planning a theatrical launch uh, in the spring. Uh, and, uh, and, and then finally, we're also gonna be on, on the uh, uh, television, uh, most likely. We're still working on a distribution deal, but we all, we'll also be on, be on people's uh, home uh, home TV. Yeah, finally, just for the two of you uh, to give me uh, your, your, your take on why Duke Kahanamuku is, is relevant today, why he is, uh, uh, you know, someone that, that people should, should pay attention to and uh, w what does his life uh, bring to us today? I'll just start, and Stephen can jump in. Um, you know, the, the, the main th the main takeaway for me from the story is the spirit of aloha. And when you know, you, you when you're a casual visitor of Hawaii, you think aloha means yeah, it means hello, goodbye. But it's much more than that. Aloha is a whole way of life. It's a spirit of how you live life. It's welcoming. It's respect. It's how you treat other people, and 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 that's so needed in society today when we have all these all this you know you know, fake, fake news and hatred and anger. I mean, it, and, and I've noticed it actually improved my life when I'm in, encountering a situation that is maybe not, not, not a comfortable situation or potential controversy. I think about the Duke and I think, how would the Duke handle that situation? How would the spirit of Aloha apply to? And, and, and when I, when I follow that, it, everything improves. And I think it's a real lesson to be learned from this film. Yeah, and I uh, was just in Hawaii, and I'm going back next week for the opening. Uh, and in in pre and for years, when we went as a family and took the kids, I kind of took it for granted. Uh, it's a beautiful place. The islands are uh, just stunning. I happen to love swimming, uh, so I would do these long distance uh, uh, swimming ocean. Uh, but this past time, I really um, started thinking about Duke and uh, not only about his swing, but just how he interacted with people and not taking the uh, uh, Polynesian culture for granted. But it is a special place. It's magical. Uh, the other thing, uh, he really stayed true to his ethic uh, about staying amateur and uh, you know competing in the Olympics and uh, trying to bring uh, a sense of identity uh, to his people. Um, he worked hard and he really did look after people. And, and when you see the film, um, there are some scenes where he's actually rescuing folks. 
he risks his life on many occasions. Uh, we captured one major incident of drowning, but uh, there are stories about him going way out in the ocean to, to risk people, to uh, uh, rescue people. But he, he, he risks his, his life in so many occasions. And when you talk to people, uh, it wasn't a showboat type thing. It was, I'm here. I was brought to this earth to, to help other people. And I think, uh, you know, that's rare. You, you don't see that today, or at least you don't, you don't hear about it very often. And he lived a long life. Uh, I think he was 78 when he, uh, when he died in 19, uh, 1980 or so. Yeah. yeah and we, and we had a funeral scene is, is the closing part of the film and thousands of people flocked the beach. Waikiki beach was, was just completely covered, um, full of people for his funeral. Well, you can see it in the film, The Waterman, coming to uh, the Honolulu Film Festival next week and perhaps to a uh, film festival near you in the uh, in the months ahead here. Uh, Stephen Ungerleiter, David Ulick, it's always great to have you uh, on the Round the Rings podcast. Thanks, Ed, and I really appreciate your questions. Always great to talk with you. Thanks, Ed. And good luck with the film. and. Uh, We'll be talking with you uh, soon again. Wish you many success for it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Around the Rings podcast. We've been talking about The Waterman, the new film from Sidewinder Productions from uh, the Global Sports Development Foundation. I'm Ed Hula. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.